Yo, what's up, nerds? This is Shane from Guys at Magic, and I'm bringing Hunter today, doing some cool upgrade deck for, uh, what's the deck that you're upgrading again, Hunter? Buckle up. Buckle up for what? Buckle up for vehicles, dude. Oh, sh- damn, dude. So Hunter's gonna be doing the $100 upgrade to this buckle up vroom vroom deck. And, uh, Hunter, just take it away and tell us what commanders you're picking. So yeah, this uh, this deck is when it was first announced. I was super excited about it because it's taken into a direction that's never really been taken in an EDH deck, and that is piloting vehicles. I mean, we first saw vehicles come out when Kaladesh was a thing, and Smuggler's Copter was probably the most powerful vehicle from that set. But after that got banned, vehicles just kind of died out. So with Kamiga and Neon Dynasty uh, adding a whole bunch of vehicles, this deck had my eye a hundred percent. Yeah, dude. And I and there are definitely two different commanders that you could take this deck in. I'm taking it with the face commander. I know we we do this all the time. If you've seen our past upgrade videos, we always just do the face commander, even though the alternate one might be a little better. And I'll explain why. So the face commander of this deck is Katori Pilot Prodigy. Katori Pilot Prodigy is one, a white and a blue for a two four legendary creature moon folk pilot. It says vehicles you control have crew two, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact creature you control gains lifelink and vigilance until end of turn. So that second part not only deals with the vehicles itself, but if you have any type of artifact creature, it gets lifelink and vigilance. So this deck That's is, nuts. yeah, this deck is full of not just vehicles but artifact creatures. Interesting. And they're only at the, they only cost two to crew, so this thing they're can like crew every vehicle. Crew. Yeah, and that's the thing, though. The the ruling of this text, however, doesn't increase crew cost. So if you had a crew of one, it doesn't go up to two, so it stays at one. So it's just re- it's just a reduction cost. Interesting. So it's not like when they say this has a base value. You know what I'm saying? Like a one one would become a four four if it's like this creature's right. a base value of four. Exactly. That's kind of interesting. And the alternate commander of this deck that everyone is in love with uh, is Shorakai Genesis Engine. Shorakai Genesis Engine is two, a white, and a blue for an 8-8 legendary artifact vehicle. It has an ability where you can pay one and tap it to draw two cards, then discard a card. Also create a 1-1 colorless pilot creature token with this creature cruise vehicles as though its power were too greater. It's got a crew of eight, and it can be your commander. Now, everyone is in love with this card because paying one mana to do an ability that you can do instantly because this is not a creature when it comes in yeah, is insane. Drawing two to churn through your deck and creating a creature for one mana is insane value. It also dodges creature removal because it's not a creature. I feel like you made the poor decision. Well, here's the thing. I, I looked at this card, and I understand why people are drawn to this card. It's because the draw to discard a card, you're churning through a deck looking for your combo pieces. That's, I feel like that's been done so many times that I was really interested to really, really build around making this deck just specifically for vehicles. Don't get me wrong. You can still switch this commander out for the other one. This one is also a vehicle itself so the vehicle theme still sticks on on track which is great so pick either one swap them out it doesn't really matter to me wait so you mean you you enjoyed making a tribal deck that's super weird of you hunter (laughs) tribes are my favorite thing man but i don't think vehicles have a tribe so you'll see what i did here Uh, about this card so yes i am going with katori pilot prodigy if you want to find a shorakai genesis engine deck i'm sure edh rec will have it i know it like i said it's extremely popular right now so people are just building decks look around for it but this one just katori pilot prodigy all right buddy well you showed us the commander and i think you picked the wrong one but after the one you picked you got something that you want to take out What what are we doing here what are we doing yeah so things i just I looked at this deck and I thought, it's pretty well balanced already. Like, there's not a lot to take out. 
So some things, however, jumped off the page. There was one massive thing that jumped off the page. Like I said, this is a vehicle and artifact deck. So the first thing I noticed in this deck that I felt like just did not belong at all is Jace, Architect of Thought. Jace, Architect of Thought is two and two blue for a Planeswalker. It has a starting loyalty of four with a plus one that says until your next turn, whenever a creature and opponent controls attacks, it gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn. Got a minus two that says reveal the top three cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other onto the bottom of your library in any order. And its alt ability at minus eight, it says for each player, search that player's library for a non-land card and exile it then that player shuffles. You may cast those cards without paying the mana costs. This card makes absolutely no sense in an artifact theme deck. I do not know why it's in here. I mean, it might make sense if you use the uh, Genesis engine, drawing cards and shit. I don't know. I mean, it's the minus, it's a minus ability. Like, it's plus ability is just giving your opponent's creature minus one, minus zero. Like, it's not that powerful. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's It didn't make any sense and you'll see i'll throw in when we get to the additions i'll throw in some other better planeswalkers but jace was an instant removal this is gone get it gone another one i'm taking out is cataclysmic gear hulk this is always seems to be in pre-con decks cataclysmic gear hulk is three and two white for a four or five artifact creature construct it's got vigilance it says when it enters the battlefield each player chooses an artifact a creature and a champion and a planeswalker from among non-land permanents they control, and then they sacrifice the rest. You're Good not rule. destroying their best stuff. Yeah. So, it fits the theme of the artifact creature, but, again, giving your opponent to say, hey, keep all your best stuff and get rid of the rest is not ideal to me. Well, it already has Vigilance, dude, so it's only going to gain lifelink? Whack. <laughs> exactly. And another one I'm getting rid of, uh, this is an artifact creature as well. It's a new one. It's called Iron Soul Enforcer. Iron Soul Enforcer is four and a white for a 4-4 four, four artifact creature human samurai. States, whenever Iron Soul Enforcer or a commander you control attacks alone, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. If I have enough creatures, I don't want to attack alone. So that okay, was easy. Camp mechanic. Yeah, it was an easy one to cut out just because... And it's not even, like we've seen with this set, it's like, if this or any samurai, it's this or a one other card. <laughs> so, Which is like what your deck's built around, but I see. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's... I get it. It's just, it's just not for me. Next up in this category, I figured these were just too expensive to keep in the deck. Uh, the first one is Organic Extinction. Organic Extinction is 8 and 2 white. It's a sorcery. It does have Improvise, which means your artifacts can help you cast this spell by tapping the artifacts. They can pay for one. It just says destroy all non-artifact creatures. Now, while that synergy is amazing, I still want to do something with the stuff I tapped, and I can't do that anymore. Yeah. And if this is in my hand early, I have a 10-mana spell that's just going to do nothing for a long time. True. But it's a pretty it's good just... one-sided board wipe, though. It is a very good one-sided board work. Don't get me wrong. It's just, uh, I don't know. I just I felt like it was too expensive. <laughs> I gotcha. Uh, another one is Access Denied. Access Denied is three and two blue for an instant. It says counter target spell. Create X one one colorless thopter artifact creature tokens with flying where X is that spell's mana value. Again, another pretty good spell. It makes you some creatures as well as countering. But for five mana, I don't know. I think just a regular counter spell is better than this. Dude, I'm only going to say this is an amazing card because I love countering and I love blue. But this is an amazing card. <laughs> it is a good card. Like I said, yeah. I'm just I'm taking things out. It is a pre-con. It's a pre-con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a pre-con. I'm making room for better stuff. You will see yes, you it are. later. Yes, you are. Um, But like if I'm paying five mana to get rid of like someone's two mana spell it's not probably it not ideal it doesn't the value isn't there for me um and then dance of the mance this one was 
kind of a hard one to take out, but I had to take it out just to make some room. This is X and a white and a blue for a sorcery. It says return up to X target artifact and or non or enchantment cards, each with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more, those permanents are 4-4 four, four creatures in addition to their other types. Also a very good card. Not good enough, baby. Just not good enough because I I want to spend my mana on bigger stuff elsewhere. If I'm if I'm trying to bring everything back, I'm already losing the game by a lot. So it's just gotta go. Next up, I'm saying goodbye to some other things. Uh just to make some room. This is the first one, Kappa Cannoneer. It's a new card. It's five and a blue for a four-four artifact creature turtle warrior. It's got improvise again. Means your artifacts can help pay for this ca- cost. Um, it's got Ward 3, which is good, but it also says when an artifact enters the battlefield, you can put a 1 1 counter on Kappa Kananir, and it can't be blocked this turn. Now it can get in with a lot of damage. Hell yeah, dude. But if I have this in my opening hand, I, I look at it like I want to play things that are cheaper. And this, this, this doesn't help this other card is Myersmith. Myersmith is one and a white for a 2-1 creature human artificer it says whenever you cast an artifact spell you may pay one if you do create a 1-1 colorless Meyer artifact creature token it's good you're just making those little guys uh, i have other things that i want to put in here this was one of the harder ones to cut out as well and again, I'm getting rid of Dispatch. Dispatch is one white mana for an instant that just says top a tap target creature. And it has Metalcraft, meaning if you control three or more artifacts, exile that creature. So at worst, you're tapping a creature and not getting rid of it. I just yeah. don't feel like it's it's not that good. <laughs> you're right. I mean, it's cool. It's cool to exile stuff, but yeah. There's it's that. a great, it's a great removal, dude. Ryan loved this card, but hey, I understand. <laughs> All right, and some more we're getting rid of. We're getting rid of Universal Surveillance. Universal Surveillance is X and three blue for a sorcery. Whoa. Again, it's got that improvise, so you can pay by tapping artifacts you control. You can draw X cards. Drawing cards well, is drawing. amazing. Yeah, but this deck, believe it or not, has so much card draw in it. I just felt like I just felt like uh this this one isn't really needed. Uh crush contraband we're getting rid of is three and a white for an instant. Choose one or both exile target artifact, exile target enchantment. Seems pretty good. Four yeah. mana, you can get rid of two things. You can find uh, cheaper things to do the same thing though. I, I am finding cheaper things to do the same thing. Exactly. We're also getting rid of this angel that doesn't fit our theme of artifact creatures. This is Indomitable Archangel for two and two white. It's a 4-4 creature angel. It's got flying. Also has Metalcraft that says artifacts you control have Shroud as long as you control three or more artifacts. So it's only good if you control enough artifacts. Which I'm hoping you would, but... Yeah, but four mana for a 4-4 flyer, just it doesn't do enough for me. It doesn't do enough. These you. last ones I felt were the hardest to get rid of, but I made my additions before I took out my subtraction, so I just had to make room. This first one, Release to Memory. Release to Memory is three and a white for an instant. It says exile target opponent's graveyard. For each creature card exiled this way, create a 1-1 one, one called a spirit creature token. I know you're the spirit boy, and this seems like a pretty good yeah. card to you. And that'd be really good for you if it was like, if that exiled it and made it a colorless, like construct that was an artifact, that'd been way better. Oh yeah, if they were artifacts that'd be great. Uh, another one I'm getting rid of is Whirler Rogue. Whirler Rogue is 2 and 2 blue for a 2-2 two, two creature human rogue artificer. Says when it enters the battlefield, create 2 1-1 one, one colors thopter artifact creature tokens with flying and tap 2 untapped artifacts you control. Target creature can't be blocked. I don't want to tap my stuff down. I, I hear that. So... This is going away. <laughs> like, like it makes those two copters and you just tap them immediately. I get that. Initially, kind of, right? 
kind of sucks. And the final card that I'm getting rid of is Arcanus Owl. This one was tough to say goodbye to. Arcanus Owl is a white and a blue, a white and a blue, a white and a blue, or a white and a blue. So that's four whites or four blues, or mix and match, whatever you want. For a 3-3 artifact creature bird, it's got flying. It says when it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact or enchantment card from among them, put them into your hand, and put the rest in the bottom of your library in random order. It's got that it's got that chance to whiff. Uh, yeah. It does Whatever. have that chance to whiff. So it was an artifact creature. It's pretty cool, but it's gotta go. Got it. What about some lands? So the lands. There's thirty seven lands in this deck. Thirty are basic. Jesus that is, Christ. <laughs> that's so many that's basic, basic lands. Play. So I'm taking four islands and three planes out of this deck. And we're going to fix the mana base later. I'm guessing we're going to upgrade. That's 100%. All right, well, we went through all the cards you didn't like. I'm more excited now to see the cards you do like. What are we adding in? Yeah, so as this is a vehicle deck, we need some pilots. Let's get some pilots going. So first one I'm adding in here is Gearshift Ace. Gearshift Ace is one in a white for a 2-1 creature dwarf pilot. It's got first strike, and it says when it crews a vehicle, that vehicle gains first strike to end a turn. That's it's a great card. Yeah, it's a for two, two power, yeah, great, everything is being crewed for two. That's yep. amazing. Synergy. And then some other new pilots that were from Kamigawa, this one being Hotshot Mechanic. Hotshot Mechanic is one white mana for a 2-1 artifact creature fox pilot. It says it crews vehicles as though the power were too greater. Seems pretty good. I was say. If I didn't have my commander. Cards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cards are great. And then the final one is Kitsune Ace. Kitsune Ace is one and a white for a 2-2 creature fox pilot. It says whenever a vehicle you control attacks, choose one. I can have either that vehicle gain first strike to end a turn or untap Kitsune Ace. Interesting. So he can crew something, and then when I attack with the vehicle, untap this card, and then he can sit back We're on blocks. Uh, or, bla- block some. or just crew That's another vehicle for blocks, too. That works. That's a good card, dude. I'm getting some Star Fox vibes, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. We got some hot shot mechanics, and they're just all good pilots, man. Yeah, they're all two. It's crazy. Oh, right, well, I'm, I'm more interested now to see these big ass creatures or uh, vehicles then we're going to be uh, accruing. Yeah, so I want to add some of these new vehicles. This deck did come with a lot of cool new ones, but they didn't add some of the ones that I thought were really good from the main set. So this first one, Mindlink Mech. Mindlink Mech is two and a blue for a 4-3 artifact vehicle. It's got flying. It says whenever Mind Link Mech becomes crewed for the first time each turn until end of turn, Mind Link Mech becomes a copy of target non legendary creature that crewed it this turn. Except it's a 4 3. It's a vehicle artifact in addition to its other types, and it has flying. It's got a crew cost of just one. I remember talking about this creature as the card was so good. It's very good, dude. I think. Uh, just being the crew, being one is fantastic alone. And then it just turns into whatever it got crewed with, so. Yeah. The Doesn't synergies. take advantage of your commander, but hey, that means you can cast <laughs> it and crew it without your commander being out. Yeah, and if I want my commander to I can make it into a flyer. Thank you. Uh, the other one I'm adding is Mech Titan Core. Mech Titan Core is two generic mana for a 2-4 artifact vehicle. You can pay five to exile Mech Titan Core and four other artifact creatures and or vehicles you control to create Mech Titan, a legendary 10-10 construct artifact creature token with flying, vigilance, trample, lifelink, and haste. That's all colors. When that token leaves the battlefield, return all cards exiled with Mech Titan Core, except Mech Titan Core, to the battlefield tapped under their owner's control. Crew of two. So we're running, too. we're running a lot of artifacts. We're running a lot of creatures that are artifacts, and we're running a lot of vehicles. So this would be really easy to set up. Yeah, this card was do sick. It. As I remember, yeah, doing ten damage to your opponent's face with all that stats of vigilance and 
Yeah. Ruin Fine. two. Let's go. Let's go. And the last one I'm getting is Reckoner Bankbuster. Reckoner Bankbuster is two generic mana for a 4 4 artifact vehicle. It states it enters the battlefield with three charge counters on it. You can pay two and tap it to remove a charge counter from Reckoner Bankbuster to draw a card. Then, if there are no charge counters on Reckoner Bankbuster, create a treasure token and a 1 1 Carlist Pilot creature token with. This creature crews vehicles as though its power were two greater and has got a crew of three. A nutty card as well. It is so good. The card <laughs> draw is insane. And then it just makes stuff after the card draw. Yeah. What more do you want? And it's it's I, I want to win the game. That's what I want. Exactly. And being an artifact, none of these have summoning sickness. So pretty Lit. cool you can use that ability immediately if you want to all right well what other what other vehicles we got coming in here well i got some older ones coming in oh, okay. and I, I had to, i had to throw in heart of kieran heart of Ooh. kieran was was really good back in the day spicy heart of kieran is two generic mana for a four four legendary artifact vehicle it's got flying and vigilance it's got a crew cost of three and i may remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalker you control rather than pay the crew cost. Remember that. So that was hot. Pretty, pretty spicy vehicle there, and you'll yeah. see in a minute that I do have some planeswalkers coming up. So nice. that'll be good. I also added uh, a card from Kaldheim. This is Cosima, God of the Voyage. Cosima, God of the Voyage, is two and a blue for a two-four legendary creature god. At the beginning of your upkeep. You may exile Cosima. If you do, it gains whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. If Cosima is exiled, you may put a voyage counter on it. If you don't, return Cosima to the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it and draw X cards where X is the number of voyage counters on it. So that's one side of the card that you can put on the field. But if you wanted to stick to the vehicle theme, you're putting on the Amon Keel. The Amon Keel is one and a blue for a 3-3 three, three legendary artifact vehicle. That states, whenever a vehicle you control deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles that many cards from the top of their library. You may play lands from among these cards for as long as they remain exiled, a crew cost of just one. I like that card. Yeah, the Omnicule is that's very good. good. It's just yeah. so, that's, that's huge ramp, and it's also destroying your opponent. Yep. Getting rid of those cards. Really good card. All right, well... I remember you took out some instants. Do we have anything to replace the instants you took out? I sure do, man. We're playing blue. So what better to play blue than play some counters? So let's get just basic old counter spell in the deck. It's two well, blue it. mana, instant, counter target spell. Now, dude, now we're, now we're cooking with gas, dude. We are. <laughs> and if you remember, I said uh, the original vehicles were from Kaladesh and Aether Revolt. Well, let's add yeah. one of those cards, too. This is Disallow. Disallow is one and two blue for an instant. Counter target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. This, this Very card's good. an all-star. All-star it card. Is. So right. yeah, we're blue. <laughs> and then uh, I'm guessing we want to add some artifacts. What we got in the artifact department. Yeah, so here's some artifact assistance. I'm going to sound like a hypocrite because I said I don't like things that are expensive, but I, this, I had to throw this in here. Darksteel Forge. Darksteel Forge is nine mana generic. It's got an, it's an artifact. It just says artifacts you control have indestructible. That includes itself. So <laughs> you want to protect all your stuff, this is the card to do it. Protects your vehicles, you, protects uh, your creatures. You better have some ramp in this damn deck. I have a lot. <laughs> okay. It's it's a very good card. And it, it on it is on the expensive side, so we'll see. What else? Uh, the other card is Padim, Console of Innovation. It's three and a blue for a 1-4 legendary creature. Uh, Vidalkin Artificer. It says artifacts you control have hexproof. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact with the highest converted mana cost or tied for the highest converted mana cost, draw a card. So let's say you have Darksteel Forge. You're always drawing a card. You're always drawing a card, because I don't think anyone's got more higher cost than that. <laughs> and at that point, 
your create your artifacts are indestructible and hexproof. So go. Exactly. And the final card I'm throwing in here is Unwinding Clock. Unwinding Clock is four generic mana for an artifact. It says untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. Jesus. So that includes all of your mana rocks, all of your vehicles, all of your artifact creatures. Everything's being untapped. So pretty good card when you have a bunch of artifacts. It is a very good card when you have a bunch of artifacts. <laughs> All right. Well, I remember you teased it with the uh Art of Kirin, but what else we what else we got going on this deck? So we got some other goodies that I'm throwing in here. If you remember we got rid of the crazy uh artifact protection remove everybody else's stuff card True. for eight mana. Or yep. ten mana, sorry. So I'll I'm putting in Wrath of God. Now, Wrath of God is one of those prime staple, old school sorcery cards that destroy everything. It's two yep. and two white. Destroy all creatures that can't be regen. This doesn't destroy any of your vehicles. So, it, you got some protection there. That is true. Destroys all your other opponent's stuff, though. Another card I'm adding in here, because it's just too good, and it's one of the best white cards to throw into a deck. Uh, that's Esper Sentinel. Esper Sentinel is one white for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature, human soldier. It says, whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card. That's that player pays X, where X is Esper Sentinel's power. So you're going to be drawing lots of cards. If you get this turn one, it's going to be so good. Yeah, this card's super annoying. Yeah, well, easily one of the best white cards for EDH. All right, now... Let's talk about the carts for hard to gear and other reasons, but what else are you adding here? Yeah, so the other uh, ones that I'm adding in here are the Planeswalkers. What mm. Planeswalkers am I adding specifically? Well, I'm going to add the first is the brand new one. That's Tezzeret Betrayer of Flesh. Tezzeret Betrayer of Flesh is two and two blue for a legendary Planeswalker. It starts with loyalty of four. The first activated ability of an artifact you activate each turn costs two less to activate. That's just a static ability already on the card. Yeah, it's got a plus one that says draw two cards, then discard two cards, unless you discard an artifact card. Also has a minus two. Hard, yeah. yeah. Also has a minus two that says target artifact becomes an artifact creature. If it isn't a vehicle, it has power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. So basically, it's got a minus two just to crew vehicles. Yep. It's awesome. And then it's ultimate ability, which is a minus six. It says you get an emblem with whenever an artifact you control becomes tapped, draw a card. If you can get that, that's amazing. You basically can get that in like two turns. <laughs> yep, you sure that's can. Good. And the that's other some- Planeswalker <laughs> I'm adding is Teferi Who Slows the Sunset. Uh, Teferi Who Slows the Sunset, if you don't know, is two, a white, and a blue for a starting loyalty of four. It has a plus one ability that says choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land. Untap the chosen permanents you control, tap the chosen permanents you don't control, and gain two life. Play this on your main phase two after you've attacked. Untap your vehicle. Yep. Untap your creature. Untap one of your lands. Yeah. And you're ready for blocks. Yeah. It's got a minus two ability that says look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Again, card just filtering through your deck is amazing. Yep. And it's ultimate, which is minus seven, says you get an emblem with untap all permanents you control during each opponent's untap step, and you draw a card during each opponent's draw step. If you ever get there, yeah, you're you're very far ahead. You're very far ahead. <laughs> it's it's too good. It was too good. These two planeswalkers are too good not to put in the deck. Yeah. I Why agree. is Jace in the deck? I don't know. Because it's a precon, dude. It doesn't make any sense, man. They it's just, just decided to throw in the cheapest planeswalker they had. It makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. Well, you talked about getting rid of a shitload of basics. So I'm. It, curious to see what you're replacing those basics with well one of the bases i'm replacing it with is actually mech hanger mech hanger i'm surprised wasn't in this deck because it's a vehicle deck and it's a vehicle 
land, essentially, from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Why wasn't this in the deck? I don't know. It's a land you can tap to add a colorless mana, or you can tap to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a pilot or vehicle spell. Or you can pay three and tap it to target vehicle becomes an artifact creature to end a turn. So you can pay three to just accrue something. Yeah, that's a really good card. That's a really good card in, your, in this deck. It really is. Maybe they were like, that's just, that's just too powerful for the pre-con. We'll let them uh-huh. upgrade. And some other cards, some other lands that I'm just throwing in here is the, the blue-white pathway. You could, ta- you could put it on one side for white, one side for blue. Also putting in Deserted Beach, which enters the battlefield unless you control... And enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more lands. You could tap for a white or a blue. Glacial Fortress, same thing. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control plains or island. You could, pay, you could tap for a white or blue. And finally, Hollowed Fountain. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you pay two life. Tap for white or blue. So just like some really good dual lands. Exactly. Yeah. I like it. I like it. So what's the... Do you know what the land count sits at then with this? So I took the land count down because I added some other cards besides land. So the land count now is 35. Okay. But you also got rid of a bunch of heavy cards too, minus the Darksteel Forge. So. Yeah. We have a lot of lands. Uh, we have yeah, a lot of... A lot of rocks. <laughs> A lot of rocks. We have a lot of card draw. So cool. It's gonna be exciting. Well, since this is the one hundred dollar list. What did you uh, make this come out to, Hunter? So getting a hundred dollars, I was like, "What am I gonna spend my money on?" Well, adding up all those cards that I just added it actually comes out to ninety nine dollars and two cents. But Ooh. at the time of recording this video. Those prices could fluctuate because we did add some cards that aren't out yet. So those are pre-sale prices. So they could come down. Most Probably likely down. Not, not going up. <laughs> yeah, they'll definitely come down. So, yeah, that's my that's uh, that's the deck list. And yeah, if you guys want to see this entire deck list, look at the description down below. I have the entire deck list on Moxfield right now with all the upgrades included with the pre-con. So go out there, grab this deck. It's really f- it's really, really cool. I was I had a lot of fun upgrading this deck because, like I said in the beginning, it's something Wizards has never done before, and I really wanted to take advantage of it. All right on, dude. I hope that you uh, will actually build this deck and I get to sit down with you on a magic night and beat your ass with, when you use pilots. <laughs> we'll see, dude. If I take these upgrades, we're going to get to it. But okay. I will be starting to work on the $300 upgrade as well. So stay tuned for that. Cool, man. Well, leave a comment, like, just subscribe, uh, tell Hunter that he did a great job or a bad job, you know, probably a good job because I, I like the deck. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. That's at guys that magic. And uh, with that, I think it's my turn next. I'll be making the video for Upgrades Unleashed. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, with that, bye bye. Peace.